Hello all, Stephen Mulhern here, sitting in for Chris on the Best of the Breakfast Show podcast with Sky from Virgin Radio. Coming up, the always entertaining Ed Gamble gives us the lowdown on his up-and-coming UK tour, which kicks off at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Astounding actress Rose Williams shares all about season two of ITV's hit series, Sanderton. Impressionist Deborah Stevenson tells us all about her Edinburgh show, The Many Voices of Deborah Stevenson. And the wonderfully wacky Timmy Mallet updates us on his 4,000 mild cycle around Britain as the cycling artist. All of that and so much more to come. So let's hear our very first guest. He's been electrifying the UK and ordering off the menu since 2018, but his latest venture sees him returning to the Edinburgh Fringe. His show Electric will be spending seven nights at the Assembly George Square and touring around the country in the autumn. But for now, let's gamble responsibly. It's the delightful Ed Gamble! (laughs) Yes. Ed, you know, that took quite a while, mate. It did, yeah. I mean, I appreciate it. Yeah, well, I hope you do, because, you know, <laughs> uh, that was slightly underwhelming the way you were looking at me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> How are you doing? You all right? I'm all right, yeah. Thanks. All good. Thanks for having me in. Yeah, listen, this is great. We were saying, what a treat this what? is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When was the last time you were here? Uh, I'm years and years ago, and it was, you know, pre, pre-pandemic, pre there were probably about a thousand people in the studio <laughs> <laughs> scouting for girls. There was about eight other guests. I got about two minutes on air to plug what I needed to plug. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the thing, right? And I need to ask you this because already, look, we're not even twenty seconds in, and we're laughing. Well, good. Did That's... you <laughs> did you always know that you were funny? Yeah, I think I think so. I was always a cheeky cheeky boy, a little cheeky boy at school, uh, and I wanted to be an actor. Really, That's what, when I when I that was my dream thing to do when I was about eight, and then I realised that I couldn't act. Uh, but was quite good at making people laugh. So, yeah, that's yeah. what I that's what I persevered with. But also a bit of presenting now on the telly again. A little bit uh, of that. Yeah, so so tell everybody about Pointless. Well, I've, I've not filmed it yet, so, I mean, oh. it might, it could be an absolute disaster. <laughs> well, I tell you, they, they are literally big shoes to fill, aren't they? They're they are enormous. huge shoes to fill. Uh, so, yeah, I'm doing, they're, they're getting a few people into sort of guest host Pointless uh, since Richard has decided that he's, you know, want to pursue his little writing career, you know, of having uh, multi-billion he's, selling books. He's so talented, isn't he? Oh, man, the, guy, the guy's yeah. got so many... But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk no, about how talented not. I am. Uh, and, yeah, so I'm doing a fair few episodes of, of co-hosting with, yeah, with Zander, good. which is very exciting. Well, you're, you're going to make it funny as well. as uh, Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. But, actually, let's talk about what you are here for before we talk about other stuff. Um, I said to Ed, I said, um, listen, you've got, got so many dates. He said, uh, oh, yeah, well, you know, we chucked a few in. A few. I held up this piece of paper to Sinead. You know, a few. You chucked in a few. Yeah. It ter- terrifies me. Now that you've shown me that bit of paper, yeah. I'm like, oh, God, no, I've, I've overbooked myself again. Yeah, I'm amazed we got it on one piece of paper. Yeah. 3rd of September, Town Hall, Loughborough, Old Vic. Then you go to Les- yeah, Manchester, South End. And you come up to London, Canterbury. How many dates? Uh, no, I think there's like 35 on there. That's not including the Fringe as well. So I'm doing a week at the Edinburgh Fringe. But yeah, back back on the electric tour in September. I mean, it's yeah, it's pretty full on. And I've already done 50. So wow, <sighs> see, this is this is how popular you are. That's the deal. You know, you can't help it, can you? You exactly. can't help it. You know, well, you say that we've booked the venues. I don't know if anyone's coming yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> do you change because obviously you have been touring with it like you said 50 dates do you change it a lot or do you, are you adding more stuff in I try and I try and mix it up every night and keep it fresh I've got the, the set show and I'm going to talk about the stuff in the show but also you've got a roll. you've got a roll with what's happening on the night as well there's nothing worse than going to see a show and just seeing the performer completely dead behind the eyes so yeah. I, I like to keep it exciting for myself as well really yeah I think there is that how do you deal with hecklers by the way it's rarer than you'd think and I try to not get angry <laughs> and try and just... If you say something back quickly and, you know, have fun with it, it's, it sort of shuts them up quickly. But that's the thing. If they keep going, then that's when, that's when it turns into an issue. Yeah, but like a, like a fight, like a battle. Like a full physical fight. I just... I strip naked from the waist down <laughs> and I run Stay at Stay away, yeah. otherwise you're getting that! <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> you know, that, that's... <laughs> That really didn't sound right. Um, now we've got uh, there's a member of our team who is absolutely incredible. By the way, yeah. she is she's so hardworking. She's brilliant. She is like your number one fan. She actually picked you up. Uh, okay. Tilly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, she's she came in here. Just listen to this. Now, as a performer, you'll know um, 
how much this must mean. She said to us, whenever she's down, she listens to you. Yeah, that's lovely. And, and then she's happy. That's nice. I'm glad that was the end of that sentence. <laughs> and she feels worse. Whenever, whenever she's down, she turns you off and goes, oh, now back in the room. Oh, thank God. Uh, do you know what? I've been to see you on tour. She's seen electric. She's told us how great it is. And do you know, Tilly, can you hear us? Tilly, can you pop Tilly? in? Tilly, come on, no time like the present. Pop in, come in, come in. Yeah, I know you've already met, but Tilly, do you know what? Let's do, do can we do a, can you were playing, I'm playing it's so, quite cool, I thought, Can actually. we do a photo? Yes, come on, absolutely. Ed, go, go on, Tilly, come on. Live, I'll take come it, on, I'll take it on my phone, I'll send it to you. Thank you. Look, come on, two right, look. Oh. Come around. Hang on, I'm move away from the mic. <laughs> Let's do it. We're going to do it, guys. Let's do it properly. This is nice. This is nice. Oh, amazing. That's Absolutely great. Absolutely superb. That's great. Right. Listen, Ed, we've got so Thanks, much Tilly. to talk to you about. Thank you, Tilly. I'll send Thank you that. You. Nice one. See? But isn't it nice to know that you make people happy? That is a lovely compliment. Yeah, it is. Exactly. I told you you'd like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, Tilly yeah. told me she came to see me in Cardiff, yeah. and this is just how a comedian brains, uh, comedian's brain works. I immediately thought, mm, there was a heckler at that show, and it wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't quite quite happy with that performance that night. Tilly. Why did you have to come to that one? Well, listen, Ed, it's, it's an absolute treat to meet you and uh, have you on the show. It's absolutely brilliant. Just one more time. Electric, when does it start? When does it finish? Go on. Start doing the Edinburgh Festival for a week in August, but the tour starts again properly on September 3rd, uh, right through till November, I think. Uh, edgamble.co.uk for tickets. Come and see me. <laughs> it just shows, though, doesn't it, that uh, clearly it's going down a storm for you to uh, to add an extra, not a couple of dates, <laughs> Five days. Yeah, I'm stop rubbing it in. I'm beginning to regret yeah, that. Yeah, well, now. listen. When, you, when you're in London, <laughs> when you're in London, I might. Um, should we pop along? Pop along. Maybe. Are you, what do you mean, maybe? Just have to you see even just fibbed and went. Yeah. <laughs> I might be busy. Yeah, well, 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 let me find Twenty second of Get October, Hammersmith Apollo. Yeah. Are you busy on that date? <laughs> no, I'm free. That's fine. Right. You're yeah, free. Okay. Yeah, you can yeah. squeeze it in. Squeeze right. it in. Yeah. yeah. I'll okay. get you a half price ticket then. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Good luck with the rest of the tour. Ta. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. The brand new second series of the period drama Sanderton continues on Fridays at 9pm on ITV. And here to tell us all about it is the radiant, the beautiful, the talented Rose Williams. <laughs> Thank you for that intro. Rose, I spent all night writing that. Oh, my gosh. I'm so moved. Thank you ever so much. Yeah, I just wanted to make it rhyme and stuff. <laughs> it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, oh, great. Thank you. And I learnt off by heart. Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful work. Thanks, guys. So, Rose, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm well. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, listen, it's great to have you. I did say to you as you walked into the studio, um, are you on your own? And you said, well, a PR person should be here, but a train's late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm only kidding. Um, now, so how you been? You been all right? Yeah, good, I'm good. I'm glad it's not last week's heat. Oh, I know. Yeah. Not good in the heat? Well, I mean, actually, I saw this perfect meme that showed um, Brit, a Brit in Spain, 35 degrees laid out, a Brit in the UK crying. So. <laughs> Do you know, that sums it up, doesn't that it? That pretty much sums it up. <laughs> now, Rose, you are here to obviously sell and tell everybody about uh, Sanderton. Uh, the new series, Series 2, yep. kicked off last Friday. Friday, didn't it? It was um, on, yes, exactly. Friday just gone, yeah. season two. It's out all on ITV Hub. Yeah. Um, so people can go and watch the entire show, which is nice. If you haven't seen it, by the way, how would you describe it? And then, because I've watched it, um, then I'll tell you what I think. Go on. Sanderton is a Jane Austen. Well, it's inspired by the first fragment of a book that she wrote before she died called Sanderton. There's 11 chapters. Um, those 11 chapters were covered in the first episode of the first season and the rest of it has been imagined by wonderful writers predominantly Andrew Davies series one and Justin Young series two um, so I suppose it's a Jane Austen inspired Regency drama with yeah. a lot of lightness and heart now do you get annoyed if people say to you is it like Downton is it like this is it like that I mean I don't really get annoyed I suppose because it, it, it is of a genre and there's this kind of renaissance I think with thanks to Bridgerton and the release of Emma um, Sanderton came out in the UK in 2019 and then there was Emma and then there was Bridgerton and now there's Persuasion on Netflix so there's obviously this appetite for yeah. the Regency period which is lovely to be part of a kind of swell of a of a you know yeah it's working yeah now you played Charlotte she's quite a feisty character isn't she yes yeah, she's headstrong 
She's yeah. headstrong. Um, she's adventurous. She's spirited. Um, she's inspired by the ingenuity of Tom Parker's vision of the town of Sanderton. She's striving for um, a path of independence in a time where that was near impossible. Um, so very much your Austin heroine. Yeah, it looks a million dollars as well. You know, when you watch it, if you've never seen it, as I say, series two. You know, Tell me if I'm wrong here. If you haven't seen series one, you could now just pick up on series two you if you don't want to watch dip, You could dip in, yeah. You yeah. could. You could, 100% could. It still works. It still works, yes. And you are massive in America. This show is so popular. Well, they they do love it. They love it. They love a British period yeah. drama over there. They do. Yeah. I suppose because it has that extra element of fantasy because it's a culture so foreign to their own. Um, so that's very nice that it's enjoyed overseas. Yeah. When you were told, look, it's gone to America, did you instantly go, ching, ching? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's so amazing is that season one was cancelled and then because there was um, such a good response, particularly in America, we were renewed for not just one but two more seasons. So we actually have shot season three already. And You've already done year. it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is exciting. Isn't it? Can you give yeah. us any, any anything or will it be a spoiler? Um, more balls, more scandal, more romance um, and more drama. And when you said more balls, we're talking <laughs> about as in... <laughs> we are, t- we, you know, sorry, yeah, we're sorry, talking. To d- yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you. No texts. Uh, now, uh, just thought I'd clear it up as we go. There's no point in going back on it. Dancing, dancing. There you go. Right. That's where my mind went to. It's of course fine. it yeah, did. Yeah. Of course. Now, listen. Let's get back on track because um, how did you get involved? This is a great story. Tell everyone how you got involved in the acting world and how. Uh, tell us about your mum. Oh, my mum. She's listening, actually. Hi, mum. Hello. Uh, she's called Sarah. Um, so I, well, I really wanted to work in fashion. My mum dipped in and out of costume work. Um, and a long, very long story short, I ended up reluctantly helping her on a couple of shows. And one of those shows was a drama called Misfits. And that's what inspired me to Great. start acting, just watching from... Watching from behind the monitor, as yeah. I'm sure you know. What well, that exactly. Looks like. You yeah, get yeah. the taste of it, don't you? Yeah, you go, oh, I'd yeah, love yeah. to be able to do what they do. So yeah. your mum's listening. Yeah. Your mum's called Sarah. My mum's listening. She's called Molly. I'll say hello to your mum. You say hello to my mum. Okay. Hi, hi, hi Sarah. Molly. There you go. Isn't that nice? <laughs> uh, Sinead, anyone you want to say hello to? Well, if my mum's listening, <laughs> Ita. 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 Hi, Ita. Hi, Ita. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Molly. She's probably still asleep. <laughs> Hello to all the mums that Yay. are listening. Aww. Now, um, reading up on you, uh, I know you've done so much stuff, but I want to ask you about Macaulay Culkin. You've worked with Aww, him. Oh, Mac. Yeah, he's amazing. He's incredible. He really is. Like, right. such a special talent. Amazing human being. Hyper creative artist. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I love the fact you call him Mac. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. not trying to be a cool. No, 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 but that's good. Yeah. Not trying to be cool. No, he's um yeah, wonderful. That was a great job. That was Seth Green's. That was such a magical experience. It was so random. Set, like, it just kind of fell out of the sky. It was 2017, I think. But um So so uh, how old would he have been then? And do you, uh, how um, old would you have been? I do you want me don't remember. I mean, this was 2017, so not that long. I mean, god, 5 years ago. Okay, so, I so was in my early 20s. Have you stayed in contact with him? Um, him and Brent, yeah, they're really, they're so sweet, that whole bunch. It's like Seth Green and his wife that was also in the movie and then um, Mac and Brenda, who now have a baby together. Yeah. They did the job together. We all I've did the got job a great together. idea. Why don't we use your phone to phone him? Oh, my God, I don't know ah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. that. Literally, you've got such a lovely complexion, you just went... <laughs> oh my God. Don't, so, don't know if that'd be appropriate. What is it? Because you are you are brilliant in Sanderton. Oh, honestly, I, I, I urge anyone nine o'clock every Friday uh, to go and watch it. What's your, what's your big you. dream? My big dream. Yeah, if you if somebody could say like on a wave of magic wand, what do you want to do? What would it be? Oh, well, at the moment, I've I've got a garden, and I just my big dream is to get my garden done. That's my current dream. I love is that, that okay? That is a lovely dream. Yeah, to I love have. that. I just sent an email actually before I came in here. I think I found a guy to do it. It's a really small space, so that's why I want to make it perfect. So that's right. my current dream. Well, is let that me, okay? Yeah. That's a <laughs> beautiful thing yeah. to say. Let me tell you now, if you just got that call off Rose <laughs> and you are a gardener, and obviously you'll know who you are, uh, if you have got the call, get round to Rose, yeah? Massive star <laughs> in America, huge star here. Uh, just, just do the job, mate. <laughs> Do the job. Rose, it's been an absolute <laughs> oh, thank pleasure. You. Uh, thank you, so don't forget every Friday, nine o'clock, and you can check you can do catch up and all that sort of yeah, stuff yeah. as well. ITV Hubs. Thank absolute you. Have, so much. have a lovely, lovely you day. Too.
The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. Right, hold on to your voices, everyone, because chances are this next guest could pinch it. You may have heard her as Theresa May or even the Queen, but now she'll be wowing us with more impressive impressions than ever before. Her new show, The Many Voices of Deborah Stevenson, hits the Edinburgh Fringe from the 5th of August. It's the delightful, the amazing, the incredible Deborah Stevenson! Hello. Oh my God. Welcome. Thank you. What an intro, eh? Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> How's it going with you? Are you good? Yeah, yeah, really good, thank you. The last time I saw you, we were doing um, Little Star, Big Star. Thing. Yes, yeah. And uh, my daughter's 15 now. Oh, you are joking me. No. Dis- no, I know. She's much taller than me. I remember <laughs> she was back on my head. She's now five foot eight and... Got a you know um, job and you know. <laughs> it's incredible. Well, listen, I'm so pleased when they told me that you were going to come on. So, first of all, tell me about the new show. What's happening? Well, I'm doing the Edinburgh Fringe at the Assembly Rooms, or uh, it's called Assembly, um, in uh, George Square. But I'm also doing a preview actually tomorrow night at Regent Centre in Christchurch, and also uh, that's Regent Theatre in Christchurch, and also at the Electric Palace in Bridport on Friday night. And I'd love people to come along and see just because it's um, there's a bit of new material in there that I want to try out, and I just need to kind of mach- oil the machine because it's been a few years now, and it's such an amazing celebratory thing for me to get back on stage with everybody there assembled all together and yeah. I mean did we, did we think it was ever going to happen we were thinking gosh this is the you know life as we know it's now changed forever but we're going to be back and having a laugh together so I'm really happy exactly well this is the great thing it is happening it's all going ahead now how did it all begin Right, because what was the first impersonation you ever did? Do you know, it's a, it's a toss-up between Kate Bush and Margaret Thatcher because when I was about six, uh, the, the, I remember saying, um, when I become Prime Minister, uh, so that was definitely a long time ago, um, <laughs> before, long before she said, the lady is not for turning. Uh, she might be turning in her grave. Uh, well, right now, Kate. <laughs> but, but uh, Kate, Kate Bush. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Let, let, go on. It was the first record I ever had. You know, it was um, it was Wuthering Heights, and how did the wine be? And of course, she's now um, number. Is she number one now, or was she number one last she week? Was. I mean, I don't, she she touch, was. Touch, touch, well, yeah. the one in the red robe and do it to you with God. So this show's got all of those in, and some new ones. Some, you know, Adele, Billie Eilish, all of that. So it's singing impressions and also comedy impressions with, you know, with it with it up to date, or the the more up to date uh, celebrities. Can we hear and, a bit of Adele? Do you mind? <laughs> no way, mate! Oh my god, I can't even believe you're asking me that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but how? But how do you, how do you come up with them? How 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 do you learn to do an impersonation? You know, can can anyone do it? Can you teach it? Yeah, I think it is teachable. I really do because um, I taught Ray Quinn on a, another ITV show that was uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, but we had to teach people like celebrities had mentors and they were taught new skills. So um, one guy had pen and, pen and teller teaching magic. Another guy. Uh, somebody else was doing, um, I didn't really take that much notice of what everyone else was doing. We were so focused. And Ray won. Ray did all kinds of amazing impressions that he couldn't do before, uh, like Joe Pasquale and um, Keith Leonard. And so could you Doris teach Dost- me one? Yeah. It's now, that. are you serious? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Ray did you. Ray did me? He did. Do you know what? something? Here's the irony. I think I know this show you're talking about because I think I hosted it. It was called Get Your Act Together. Yes, I, re- I remember now. Yes, that was wow. Well, you've got a good memory. This is incredible, right? Yes, no, it's all coming back now, right? So, what what can you teach me right now, live on Virgin Radio? Uh, well, I think you sound a little bit like oh gosh, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I don't think it would be too much of a stretch for you to say good game, good game. A bit of bruising. <laughs> I love the fact you were preempted by. I hope you're not too offended by um, the late <laughs> Bruce Forsyth. Right. Okay. So here we go. Well, here we go. Here we go. Uh, the legendary. Yeah. Injury. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good game. Good game. 
brilliant. Thank that you. Was really good. Thank you. I'm How shocked. Do you want my Lorraine now? Do you want my Lorraine? <laughs> no. I think you modelled yourself on him, though, haven't you? You've grown up kind of watching him thinking, that's me, I'll be the next, I'll be in that. And, well, you've been pretty successful, let's face it. Oh, thank you. Well, listen, uh, just before you go, what is the one impersonation that everybody gets you to do? Um, oh, uh, 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 I don't know. Do, well, I heard you do Donald Trump the other day, and I thought it was incredible. Uh, yeah, nobody asked me to do Donald Trump. People say, could, <laughs> could you not do a Trump? <laughs> no, um, you know, the thing is, though, you know, I'll, they all want to do me. I'm a God's gift to impressionists. They all want to do me, especially the women. Am I allowed to say that this time? <laughs> you, you just have. Right. Uh -oh. Now, Deborah, listen, it's lovely to talk to you. Uh, you know how talented you are. And just one more quick reminder. Uh, when can they see your tour in Edinburgh, please? I know your preview's tomorrow, but the date's yeah, in yeah, Edinburgh as well. Edinburgh Festival starts on the 5th of August. And yeah, my previous tomorrow. Incredible. Yeah. Listen, Deborah Stevenson, everyone. There you go. Uh, Deborah, thanks, good luck. Bye. Lovely you. to talk to you. All the best. Ah, oh, how about that? She, a lady of many voices. She's incredibly talented. And yeah. she got you to do a really good impression. There you go. See. I was surprised. Well done. Good go. Yeah. Do you try it? No. Go on. No, you go -go. no, stop. <laughs> The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. From Land's End to Margate, Dartford to Hampshire, this wacky wackaday presenter has traded in his mallet for two wheels and a paintbrush. He's currently in the midst of a mega cycling tour of Britain with 4,520 miles already under his belt, painting up a storm as he goes. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the utterly brilliant, the legend that is Timmy Mallet! Timmy, I could see you smiling away. Marvellous. Hey, how lovely to speak to you and join you this morning, Stephen. Are you all right? What a gorgeous morning here in Norfolk. I'm at the Fisherman's Return in Winterton, and I'm sitting outside. My bike is looking gorgeous. What you can't see is that I woke up this morning and I've got a flat tyre. Well, do you know what? I saw you before we started mm. chatting and you, I, was, I was wondering, what's he doing with his bike? So, so mm. have you got everything to fix it, surely? Well, uh, I've, got, I've got a little pump and, and you, you pump away with a little pump. What I could really do with is a, is a big foot pump. So if you're near Winterton-on-Sea in Norfolk this morning, not far from Great Yarmouth, <laughs> would you bring out a great big foot pump yes. and uh, come and find me at the Fisherman's Return and you can uh, help me pump up the back tyre <laughs> right. and then I'll be able to pedal. Otherwise, it's, um, it'll be a bit tricky, right. isn't it? This is, right, this is a plea live on Virgin Radio. Please save Timmy Mallet. If you've got a pump and near the Fisherman's Arm, Arms, right, get yourself... No, the Fisherman's Return. The Fisherman's <laughs> Return. Don't go to the Fisherman's Arms, because right, he might be... There's a great big fish right behind the bike uh, on the wall. You can't miss it. It's in uh, Winterton on Sea, which incredible. is uh, just, just up from Great Yarmouth. Right, now, Timmy, listen, you, we were speaking earlier, right? I was, Sinead was so excited you were coming in. I was so excited. Everyone's so excited about you, because you did kick things off in terms of TV land. Kids TV... Wackaday was just it was it was legendary. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. And it's really nice to see the response that, that Wackaday gets on my circumnavigation. So here I am cycling around the whole country. I set off, Stephen, on March the 17th. That's how long I've been going. And I went from Paddington down the Thames to Dartford, and then I took a right and went to Rochester and around the edge of Kent and all the way along the south coast till I got to Land's End and then turn right and go up the west coast and when I got to the bridge, turn left and go all the way around Wales until I got back to England and then up or around uh, Morecambe Bay, Cumbria, till I got to the Solway Firth and then there's the massive country of Scotland uh, and all up the uh, west coast through the highlands until I got to John O'Groats and came back down i'm working my way back down the east coast now and i'm in norfolk heading south back to paddington and the thing is every day people are stopping me and going timmy 
Wackaday! Yes. And it's just lovely. All I get, Stephen, is a big smile from people. And I, I am so lucky. I'm well, so fortunate. Timmy, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm giving you a whack a wave right now. I'm giving you a whack a wave. There, one back from the mallet. Right. But Brilliant. also, everywhere you go, you're, you're doing paintings. Because I didn't realise. Now, listen, yeah. it'd be very easy for any presenter to go, but these paintings are amazing. Timmy, this has blown me away. I didn't realise that you were an artist. Well, I'm carrying with me my Timmy pencil case. And in here are my paints. So I've got a little set of watercolours like this and uh, various sketchbooks. And so but look at that. I'm sketching everywhere I go. This is the only three-sided castle in Europe, yeah. uh, in the world, actually. And this is in Scotland, in Galloway. Um, you know, you think the weather's gorgeous when you see you know, beautiful this, spring honestly, flowers like that. If you've never seen Timmy's work, you need to check this out. Are we going to put some up on our socials? Yes, yeah, we okay. are. At Virgin yeah. Radio UK, uh, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, you'll be able to see these. Honestly, Timmy, they're full respect to you because they are. Do You You must sell them. You must sell them. Yeah, on, on Mallet's Palette. That's my website for the art. <laughs> Mallet's Palette. Mallet's Palette. You see here that, you know, it's not always a gorgeous sunny day on the cycle ride. This was in Inverary and the rain came in as I was painting that. But then I work up some larger paintings and I've got a big piece like this. Yeah, I've got this one in front of me, actually. That's the windmill. Yeah, look at it. This is at Horsey yesterday. So Horsey in the Norfolk Broads has got this lovely, stunning... Uh, well, and wind. even the, the, the lake as well. It's just, it's just. Honestly, please check them out. A mallet's palette at Virgin Radio UK, and you'll see why I'm in awe of this because they are absolutely stunning. What made you want to do this, by the way, riding around all of Britain? Oh, oh that, that's easy. That, that this is this is something I've uh, I've had in the back of my mind. I like the idea of cycle touring. I like the idea of of where it leads to. So uh, it's about living in the moment. And this is inspired by my brother Martin, who had language and learning difficulties with Down syndrome, and lived every day of his sixty four years in the moment. Every day for Martin, the best day ever. He would say, "You and me." I'm happy. And I think what a lovely sentiment wow, yeah. that is about being in the moment, living in the moment. So on this bike ride, um, I, I don't pre-book anywhere. <laughs> I just rock up about four or five o'clock in the afternoon and say, have you got any space? I got here last night at 5.30. I said, have you got any room? He said, yeah, I think we can fit you in, Timmy. So they put the bike in with the beer barrels and then uh, me up in one of the rooms. Uh, and the painting side of it's come from Turner and Constable, who are uh, great British artists who 200 years ago couldn't go to Europe because there was a dictator rampaging everywhere. Ho-hum from Napoleon to Putin. And we go, OK, are their views still there? Can you still see what Turner painted? And the fact is you can. Stephen, you can stand in exactly the same position within six feet of where he stood and sketched wow. and paint those views. And that's what I'm doing. I'm even painting my hat. Yeah, this look, is he's, he's, he's literally all hat. over his hat. He's, he's painted the whole hat. Mallet's palette, uh, check it out. And also for, yeah. at Virgin Radio uh, UK, he's a talented man. He is a legend. Everybody, let's hear it for Timmy Mallet. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. We've heard from a bunch of incredible guests already, but there's still more to come. Virgin Radio's very own Kate Lawler spills the beans on Big Brother 20 years on from her Series 3 win. Sky Sports F1's David Crofty Croft took a pit stop ahead of this weekend's Hungarian Grand Prix. Cricketing legend Nasser Hussein gives us the gossip on the 100, which returns to Sky Sports on Wednesday. So let's get right back into it. In 2002, the big sister of reality TV stole our hearts when she won Series 3 of Big Brother 20 years ago. Now, she is a Virgin Radio staple and Sunday Times best-selling author. She's back on her drive time show for one week only. It just goes to show you can't escape the long arm of the Lawler. It's the wonderful Kate Lawler. Hello, hello. Hello, squeaky shoes, Stephen <laughs> Mulhern. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? Very good indeed. Listen, I can't believe it's 20 years ago that you won the show. 
Oh, I, I just, I, I know you said it feels like last year. It doesn't feel like last year for me, but it feels like 10 years ago. Honestly, it's just a reminder of how quickly life passes you by and how much can happen in one's lifetime. It's yeah. just, it's, yeah, 20 years ago. It's crazy. I thought I was really old going in the house and I was <laughs> at 22. I felt like a proper grown up and I realise now just how young I was. But it was a great experience. It's incredible how Big Brother did change. It changed reality TV. In fact, it was mm. it really it really began the whole sort of cycle, didn't it? Yeah, it was it was I think it was the OG of reality TV and there was nothing like Big Brother on our TV screens before. There was a real appetite for kind of, you know, like a this social experiment that the people watching that we all loved. I mean, when you look at series three, which I which I was on, there was like a twenty four our live stream on E4 where people would just watch us sleep yeah. over, like, overnight because they were just really interested in the lives of ordinary people, not celebrities, doing ordinary things like just, you know, snoring or getting up to take a pee or going into the diary room to have a chat because they couldn't sleep. And it was event TV. There was no social media. You know, when you watch the show, you would then talk about it the next day at work. You wouldn't all be on WhatsApp groups the night or Twitter in the evening just talking about it. You would all talk about it on the train to work with people you yeah. commuted with. Or, do you know what I mean? It was such a different experience of reality TV to how it is today. Um, and, it, yeah, it's so nostalgic now to think back to what it was like. It was that thing also where, you know, as you said, it was just ordinary people doing their own thing, but also the fact that lay members of the public, they have no, nothing to nothing to hide. Do you know what I mean? Whereas the celebrity versions aren't ever as good because they're always mm. so savvy about stuff. <laughs> yeah, but I was a massive fan of the celebrity Big Brothers. I really did enjoy them because you'd always just see, like, really, like, the super... Because we're all interested in celebrities, aren't we? So, like, watching them go into, like, the Big Brother house, which was notorious for having ordinary people in, was a really kind of, I don't know, like a strange concept. And I, I absolutely loved the celebrity versions, but there was just something so magical about the early days of Big Brother with it being such a, a new um, idea for a TV show. And, yeah, I was talking to somebody the other day about it and how it compares to Love Island, and I think it was always lovely when people found romance in Big Brother because obviously that wasn't the premise of the show. It was very much a social experiment and a popularity contest where people were kind of vying for the public's votes and stuff. So it was always a nice little extra if people found romance. I remember being obsessed with um, Helen and Paul from Big Brother 2. Um, she was Welsh, Helen. And Are they she, still like, married? They got, to, they got to the end of the series and they were just, it was so cute the way they kind of fell in love. And I think they stayed together for such a long time. It's really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the early days of Big Brother, iconic. And I think when Bar Brian Dowling won that series of Big Brother 2, I just remember thinking that would be so much fun to do. And I didn't actually, and I wasn't meant to be, do Big Brother, it was meant to be my twin sister. But she couldn't be bothered to fill in the application form, so I, I did it instead. Um, oh, you are joking. About... No, she wanted to do it. She was the Big Brother fan, the Big Brother addict. She, she watched Series 1, she watched Series 2. I got into Big Brother 2 at, towards the end and thought it looked like a laugh. And then I, I was living in Japan um, like six months before Big Brother 3 and then I came back un unexpectedly and just applied because my sister was too lazy to fill in the application form but then I ended up doing it myself. But she absolutely, I think for her, watching the show with her twin sister on it was actually better for her because she got to live the whole, you know, she got to watch Big Brother with her twin sister in the show. And yeah. She just absolutely loved it. Just amazing. Well, listen, you've obviously mm. heard that it's coming back. Yeah, I know. It's crazy to think it's coming back. But also, I think it was always going to make a return to our TV screens. I don't think it was, it was ever going to be gone forever, but it needed a new home. You know, I think it had run its course on Channel 5. And I think it's really exciting that ITV are getting their hands on it because you just know they're going to do something amazing with it. Yeah, it's be interesting to see who... Uh... Who hosts it? Um, you know, Emma Willis, obviously, is a prime suspect. She hosts a lot yeah, of series. I, love Emma. But I mean, are... she, she's brilliant and she she was a great host after Davina. Davina obviously was an amazing host. I'd love to see Davina or Emma host it. Yeah. Or Rylan. I mean, I wouldn't I, I, I heard you talking about it earlier saying, Well, ask Kate if she would be up for it. Obviously I'm not gonna say no to hosting Big Brother, but um it's it depends on what the producers want, whether they want to kind of keep that nostalgia and have somebody like known for presenting Big Brother, like Emma, like Davina, or whether they want to go with somebody new. I'd like to host it with Alison Hammond. I think that would be fun. Who was in the house with you? 
Yeah, she's great. She's it's incredible. Funny. It's incredible the people you had. Obviously, Jay Cooney was there, Alex Sibley, yeah. um, Adele <laughs> Roberts. You know, it was just know. So, such a good time. I still can't believe it's 20 years ago. But listen, more importantly, we will hear you on Drive Time a bit later. Thank you very much. I look forward to doing it. It's good to be back just for a week. Yeah, lovely. Well, listen, Kate, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, and I hope you get your squeaky shoes sorted. <laughs> Thanking you. See you later. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. The Hungarian Grand Prix kicks off this Sunday. And I know what you're thinking, Stephen, please give us all of your knowledge of the Grand Prix because we know you love football and tennis and, you know, you know, listen, I do actually love tennis, but when it comes to sport, I'm not the man in the know, but David Crofty, Croft is, are you there, Crofty? Morning, Stephen, how are you? I'm very good, as soon as you hear your voice, you go, oh yeah, that's him, uh, so how's it going with you? Uh, not bad at all, I'm here in Budapest, which is uh, stinking hot, as per usual at this time of the year, but might bring a bit of rain on Saturday, which could be fun for qualifying. Budapest is a fine city. The Hungarian Grand Prix is a great race. Lovely hearing your dulcet tones this morning. What, what more could I want on a Thursday morning? <laughs> Where are you, by the way? Where are you actually speaking from? Are you uh, in like I'm... a little hut? <laughs> this is my little basement at hut. Yeah, I'm on the first floor of the Hilton Garden Inn in Budapest. Which, um, if that's the garden out the back, it, someone needs to get the lawnmower out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know, you said about there might be some rain. That yeah. obviously will affect the drivers. Do they do they have something like planned? Do they change tyres? How does it work? Because it's it must change everything in terms of their driving style. Yeah, well they get they get little windscreen wipers on their visors, on their crash helmets. That helps them. Are you winding me up? Yes, completely. But I just thought so... I'd take your world free knowledge this morning. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? At least I tell the truth, you see. At least I could have gone, oh, yeah, that's so clever. <laughs> no, I don't know why they don't do it, personally. Um, yeah, it, it does. Um, the thing about uh, the, the wet, you have to go hunting for the grip that isn't on the racing line. Let me get technical with you. When your cars go, take a certain line, rubber gets laid down on the track from the tyres. And when it rains, that rubber gets really, really slippy. So you have to kind of go offline to get more grip, which means changing your plan as to how you drive around a, a racetrack. Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton are particularly good at going and hunting for that grip offline. And you also have to be really careful, especially at a place like the Hungaro Ring, where you've got some downhill braking zones that can affect you. Look at last year's race. At the start of last year's race, Valtteri Bottas got his braking all wrong going into the first corner. It was like 10-pin bowling. He wiped out about six or seven cars yeah. during the first corner alone, which is why Esteban Ocon, or one of the reasons Esteban Ocon, went on to win his first ever Grand Prix. Wow. See, there was a, there was a load of conversation, wasn't there, about what do you call the bar that virtually saved the guy's life? Uh, the halo. The halo, that's it. And there was debate of whether they should have it. Whether they, Surely now there's going to be a rule to say they've got to have it. No? Every... Every FIA single-seater series now has the halo. It's made from titanium. I think it can take about two and a half double-decker buses worth of weight on top of it before it kind of breaks a bit. Uh, we had the debate when it first came in, do we need the halo? I think various accidents have shown us since. Yes, we do, including Guan Yu Zhou, of course, with that Silverstone accident, which was absolutely horrific. But the halo is doing the job it intended to and providing a... Uh, a, a, a little shell around the driver uh, yeah. to, to stop tyres hitting them, to stop cars crashing down on them. It's a brilliant idea. Well, let's have a little prediction from you. Who do you think is going to win on Sunday? Right, OK. So, so far this season, Charles Leclerc has been really good at getting pole, but not getting wins. Max Verstappen's been less good at getting pole, but more good at getting wins. So, the, the, uh, of that, I could see Leclerc winning qualifying and Verstappen winning the race. But... If ever there was a race for Lewis Hamilton to win this year, and he's not in the best car he's ever been in, but he loves the Hungaro ring, eight poles, eight wins, uh, one of either would break the record for the most of a single circuit. I've just got a feeling this could be Lewis's weekend. Four consecutive podiums, the seven-time world champion is on a, on a great roll at the moment, and I think it would be fitting to go into the summer break and a great motivational boost for him and Mercedes to get that win, and he could do it here. Well, do you know, I'd love to know. I don't know whether you've ever spoke to any of the drivers about this. I'd love to know how they feel just before the race or when they're on the starting line. Do you know what I mean? Just what sort of the adrenaline, the nerves. You know, have you got any sort of feeling of how they must feel? Yeah, well, we, we, we get to speak to them. Unlike really any other sport, we get to speak to the drivers just before they climb into the cockpit. 
pit. Martin Brundlebury is grid walk and, and Simon Lazen, our presenter, kind of, and Rachel Brooks, our reporter, and Natalie uh, Pinker, mopping up the, the, the interview with the drivers. They're cool. They're, they're, they're very calm. They're sipping water because they know that for the next 70 laps, they're not going to get much of a drink. And if they do, it's going to be roasting hot. Um, and they're just going through their plans with their engineers. Formula One drivers, they're like crocodiles. Their the heart beats at about eight yeah. beats per minute. Crocodiles, that's great. <laughs> well, listen, Crotty, thank you so much, by the way. It's lovely to uh, to speak to you one-to-one. You too. Yeah. You too, mate. Let's do it again. Absolutely. Have a lovely time. Thank you. You All take care. Have a great weekend. Oh, what a nice guy. So remember the Hung- Hungarian Grand Prix this Sunday at 2pm. Sky Sports F1 first practice tomorrow from 12.30pm. And you can watch all the races live and exclusive on Sky Sports F1. I really enjoyed that. See, I've got to say... When you don't know about something, yeah. it's a lot easier to interview somebody about something. Yes, exactly. And you ask questions, you know, who wants to interview someone if you know everything already? Quite. I now know they don't have window wipers on their helmet. <laughs> Lesson of the day. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. If the idea of a game of cricket leaves you totally stumped, our next guest is just the man you need. There's hundreds of reasons to be excited as the 100 is returning to Sky Sports from Wednesday with winning innings and brilliant batsmen. It's sure to bowl us over. And to tell us all about it, he's a cricketing legend. It is the one and only NASA Hussein. NASA, how you doing? Yeah, I was doing all right until all your gags there. I was doing absolutely fine. Unbelievable. Yeah, well, what a, what a way to start. Morning to you, Nassau. <laughs> um, now, listen, tell us about the 100. For those that don't know about it, just explain the whole premise, if you wouldn't mind. basic premise is that, as you said, sometimes the game can be complicated. Sometimes the game can be long. You know, a five-day test match isn't for everyone out, everyone out there. So... Uh, what what the ECB and Sky have tried to do is get it to the younger audience and people who just want to turn up, have a bit of fun. And it's a very simplified form of the game. You have 100 balls. One side has 100 balls. Uh, and, and the currency is just runs and balls. And the other side go out to bat after that and try and get more runs in those 100 balls. So it's not uh, dumbing down the game because it's still... High quality. If anyone saw it last year and watched Imran Tahir take a hat trick or Liam Livingston smash it out of the ground or Marazan Cap get four for nine in the final or the first women's game um, at the Oval, the Oval Invincibles game, it was of the highest quality. It is just so that, you know, the audience is slightly different, a younger family feel, come and enjoy your cricket. The thing about the 100 for me, right, and I'm, I'm not really into sport, but I find the 100 exciting. I think it's more exciting than the original game of cricket. What, what do you think? I think it, you've got to have cricket for everyone. Um, as I just said, you know, there will be people that enjoy the five-day format. They like the slow burner where a test match will build and build to a crescendo on the last day, almost like a good book. And there'll be the others that just want to pop along to the Oval or Lords or Cardiff or the Aegeus Bowl, Trent Bridge, Birmingham, just try and get there. And, and, and have some fun and enjoy the cricket and enjoy it becomes the hundred is a bit more like the theater of a game of cricket really. yes. it is it is a spectacle i know my kids uh, and my wife went uh, last year and they loved every minute of it and as soon as the first game finished they came back to me can we have some more tickets how do we buy some <laughs> more tickets can we go to the final uh, and the women's cricket in particular last year it really showed the quality and the standard and the competitiveness of women's cricket. It was right out there. It was fully exposed and they put on an absolutely brilliant show. They really did. And that's going to be taken on this year. I think their first game on the 11th is the, is the evening game, uh, the box office game starting later than the men's game, which is absolutely deserved because of the quality of cricket they put on last year. They come into the tournament a week later, eight days later, because they're involved in the Commonwealth Games this next week. Right. Um, it, it'll be worth the wait, that is for certain. But I think you're so right in terms of it does get younger people involved, which is just a great thing. Uh, the 100, by the way, is returning to Sky Sports from Wednesday, next Wednesday, the 3rd of August, um, with each of the 60 matches shown live on Sky Sports and the winners will be crowned on September the 3rd. Now, NASA, whilst you're here, um, Sky Sports are also taking 100 on tour, aren't they, this weekend? They are, yeah. I'm uh, I'm in London on Sunday. I think Saturday there at uh, Manchester. So yeah, we we're getting, we, you know, we're out there trying to trying to get kids to come and down and be in the nets and face a bowling machine. Um, yeah, we're we're out and about. We we've got various things going on 
behind the scenes. Even through during the tournament, we've got some of our team based with the Southern Brave. So we've got an access all areas uh, behind the scenes look at one of the hundred sides. And all our most of our games are either on the YouTube channel or, or the TikTok channel, whatever TikTok is. They tell me it's quite <laughs> good for TikTok. So, um, you know, we're trying to get it out there as yeah. much as possible for everyone. I can't imagine anybody what a feeling must be to go up against a legend like yourself. I'll tell you what, if it's in London, I might pop along, you know, give it a go. Who knows? You never know. Uh, Nessa, listen, thank you so much. Um, it sounds like an amazing family day out as well. And uh, I'm going to plug all of the others in just a moment. But have a lovely day, whatever you're doing. And lovely to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Cheers, Nasa. All the best. Right, so as Nasa said, the 100 is on tour this weekend, all courtesy of Sky Sports. Um, Manchester Saturday, um, Cathedral Gardens, and London on Sunday the 31st at Potter Field Park. Um and everyone is invited to come down, meet the greatest names in the game for an amazing day out. And as NASA said, he will be attending on Sunday. So get yourself down there. Say hello to the greats. I think it's a genius idea. Quick, fast paced, always on the edge of your seat. 100 balls each side. Who's the winner? Simple. The best of the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Virgin Radio. Thank you so much for listening to the Best of the Breakfast Show podcast. Remember to subscribe so that you never miss the weekly roundup of all the best bits from the Virgin Radio Breakfast Show with Sky. 